Welcome to Mind Over Matter, where we feature young Jamaicans who are shooting for the stars. I'm your host, Margaret Boyne. Remember, if you haven't subscribed to the channel as yet, please do and hit the notification bell. Imagine this, you desperately need cash and every ATM you find is either out of service or out of cash. Frustrating, right? Today's guest has created an app called ATM Finder JA that takes the guesswork out of finding a function in ATM. He's an innovator, a problem solver who is changing the way we think about ATMs. My guest is DeAndro Moore. Welcome to Mind Over Matter, DeAndro. Hey, Mrs. Boyne. Thanks for having me. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Sure. So, um, as you said, I'm DeAndro. I grew up in uh, South Manchester, went to the Carter College. After the Carter College, I went on to university of the West Indies, did a bachelor's degree in computer science, and now I work as a software developer. And recently, I launched the ATM Finder app that helps Jamaicans and tourists, you know, to find working ATMs across the country. So tell me now how you have created this app. Yeah. It's creating a buzz. Yeah. Tell me what sparked um the idea for this uh, app in the first place. Well, I believe it was it was in December, the last part of December, I was trying to find an ATM and I didn't know the closest the well one, the, the first one I went to it wasn't working. So I was like, where's the next one beside the uh, closest one to me? And uh, I didn't know. And it was, it took uh, like 30 minutes just to find something that was working. And then a few days after, a friend of mine, we're having a conversation and we're talking about different topical issues in the country. Mm -hmm. And um, that uh, particular thing came up and I just decided that, hey, I'm going to build this. And I started it. I went on Twitter and saw that a lot of persons were talking about it on Twitter as well. So that uh, validated the idea that it was a, indeed a real problem. Mm -hmm. So you were responding to the frustrations and, and the complaints of, of the Jamaican people, basically. <laughs> yes, yes. So can you walk us through a little bit, though, about the development process? It started, I think it was the last two weeks of December I started it. The first night I did some research, I realized that it was going to be hard to get a good data set of all the ATMs because what I needed was the coordinates as the latitude and longitude of the ATM locations, mm -hmm. as well as the type, the associated bank. Mm -hmm. And then I think the following day, I realized I was on Google Maps. Just I don't I don't even remember what I was doing, but I realized that hey, there were some ATMs there, and I could use Google Places API to get the ATMs. So what that is, it's a it's a program from Google that you can basically pay for a list of um things on their services. So I paid them thirty dollars, mm -hmm. and then I got around two hundred and fifty plus ATM locations. And once I got that, it was um pretty much uh, everything else was up my alley because I'm a mobile developer. So mm -hmm. that's what I do. So I was pretty much, um you know, just engineering the rest of it now. So when you say $30, you mean 30 what? US? $30 US. <laughs> US, right? Yeah, yeah. US. So $30 to start out. So yeah. you were able to get that data that you needed. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. What were some of the other the challenges and the hurdles that you encountered during the whole process? All right. So I think I would say the major challenges perhaps would be that uh, some of the ATM, well, when I when I launched the app, I realized that a lot of ATMs were also missing because even though, even though I got 250 plus mm -hmm. persons were messaging and saying that, hey, I don't see this ATM at X place. So then I had to create, I had initially I had persons just, you know, DM me with uh, the coordinates and the type of ATM. And then I added a form, like a Google form in the app that, app that, that you can just submit um, the coordinates and um, and the type of ATM. So I think just the just the access to that public data, because mm -hmm. uh, public data is, you know, it's not very easy to get in Jamaica. So mm -hmm. I think that, that the data is really the, the challenge, to be honest. Mm -hmm. yeah. But what about funding? Did you need any other funding? Because by $30 couldn't do it. 
<laughs> no, um, so uh, the, the thing why I love uh, technology is it's a very good equalizer, meaning mm -hmm. that once you have the skill and you're willing to learn, anyone can get into it with very, very minimum um, startup mm -hmm. funding, right? Mm -hmm. So you just need, for example, you just need to learn how to code. You can use YouTube, you can go to university, or you can do programs online. So mm -hmm. I already had that coding background. So then the only cost was really the 30 USD. I have to pay up to $99 each year, 99 USD each year to have my developer account so I can publish apps. And then you pay Google $25 each um, mm -hmm. for life, actually. So mm -hmm. there was no startup capital. Okay. It was just, um, you know, paying Apple and Google. Mm -hmm. So how long did it take you though, the whole creation of it of, right. of this app? So it took me a week to have a working a week? prototype, <laughs> a working prototype. What? And then I used the next week now to send some of my friends and have them test it. And then I made um bug fixes and other improvements um as I went along. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so did you have anybody who worked with you or you know collaborated or you did it on your own right so um currently it's only available on i and apple so an ios um store so i did that on my own within those two weeks then after i launched it i got together with another developer and he's mm -hmm. currently working on the android version his name is milton and oh. he's currently working on the android version so it's basically finished it's mm -hmm. just in a testing period by uh, the Google Play Store, a 14 days testing period. Mm -hmm. So we're undergoing that phase right now. And then the Android one will be live by, mm -hmm. I want to say, early February. Mm -hmm. um, the banks, did you need anything from them? They were, they, they, how, how they got into the whole process? All or right. this was just outside of the banks? Right. So this was outside of the banks because oh. the approach I took was a, is a crowd um, source approach. So I don't know if you've ever oh. used Waze before, where you can like, uh, when if you're driving, you can pinpoint where, um, you know, bad road is or construction is under, um, is underway, oh. police is there and so forth. Okay. Yeah. So that is a community driven where persons are contributing to the updates. Mm. So that's the same approach I took within um, ATM Finder, where it's ordinary Jamaicans like me and you are contributing to the updates within the mm. app. So mm. I go to an ATM and if it's not working, I just update it that it's not working and it shows which ATM. ATM, it shows how long ago I made that update so that other users who are going to that location can see that, hey, this ATM isn't working and it was submitted, for example, three days ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's very community driven. Oh, so you rely on the, the users of the actual right. app to, for the yeah. update. Oh, yeah. all right. So tell me a little about the key features of the, uh, of the app. Sure. So... Uh, one of the things that I really um like which uh, that I did was uh, the filtering option. So when you just open the app, you'll see a list of all the ATMs. You'll see um the map which has all the ATMs in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. But then you can filter by say work in Scotia Bank because. I tend to normally go to a Scotia ATM. So having that filter just shows me all the working ones that are closest mm. to me. And that's just an easy way to, um, to navigate the app as well. The other, mm. um, other features such as like um, navigation. So once you click on an ATM, you can get directions within your Apple Maps or your Google Maps. So if you're not familiar with the area or if you're a tourist or so forth, it gives you a direction to the, to the ATM. Mm -hmm. No, I also launched another feature which um is show which shows you if an ATM is deposit taking or if it's dual currency. No, mm -hmm. I currently I only have Scotia Bank because I was able to find um some Scotia Bank data online, so I used that. But other persons say that they were willing to actually contribute look um via the app to say if an ATM is deposit taking or dual currency. So I also added that feature so persons can manually put if uh you know if this ATM takes deposit, does do a currency and so on. Okay. So yeah. have you approached the banks though to help you in this regard? Like some of the, the data that you need? 
info. I haven't approached the banks um, for that. <laughs> no. I am still working on some fine tuning some other aspects of the app. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, the banks and myself could also benefit from this because mm -hmm. having, you know, that data from all the banks um, on their, uh, if their ATM is working or not, I don't know if banks have a system that actually uh, tell, tells them that as well as if the, as if, uh, as well as if an ATM is deposit taken, mm -hmm. because as I said, I only have Scotiabank data, mm -hmm. right? And then I'm pretty sure that my data would also directly help, you know, the bank's customers because mm -hmm. they can able to uh, service, prioritize how they are servicing their ATMs to actually, you know, probably perhaps service the ones that are most frequent, mm -hmm. uh, you know, frequented ATMs. So that's something that I'll be open to doing with the banks. Mm -hmm. So your information, though, it's updated in real time, would you say? Yes. So as you um as you go into the app and make an update, then mm -hmm. somebody else just opening the app and click on that ATM will probably see updated five mm -hmm. seconds ago. So it's okay. very real time. Mm -hmm. So how would you know, though? Suppose somebody went to a bank no right. money, no money. How would you know when it was refilled? Yes, so um, that's one of the challenges that I'm currently facing because, mm. as you say, um, perhaps the bank decided to service this ATM this evening. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if I am seeing an ATM that's saying not working, I would probably want to avoid it. You know, so perhaps you have an ATM that's been avoided for, say, three weeks because no one, everybody is just skipping over it when it was actually fixed by mm -hmm. the bank uh, while we're having this conversation, for example. <laughs> so um, that's a challenge that I'm currently facing. And uh, um, there's currently no way out. There's currently no, uh, you know, solo working solution yeah. to it yet, but... Uh, um, as I go along, I'll see how best because that would that would that would definitely need the bank's um intervention, mm -hmm. you know, to help alleviate that issue. Mm -hmm. But yeah. but this app, Deandra, will be able to help you and the bank, the, the the bank's customers as well. So I don't see why they they, they would wouldn't hop on to this, you know. I, I don't know. I say we'll see. I'll have to um you know make some contacts and then. Uh, we'll see we'll take it from there mm -hmm. so what about um the criminal element who would want to use this right. app for other illegal yeah. reasons yes so um well i'll start by saying with every advancement in technology mm -hmm. uh, persons will always try to do good or bad so you as the good actor um, have to put up guardrails to prevent this mm -hmm. but you can't always um, have a guardrail for everything from the get go. You have to um adapt as as time goes by. Yeah. So what yeah. I did um initially is to have a proximity check, so you can only update an eighteen that's within a certain radius from you. So I'm in Kingston. I can't update an ATM in probably New Kingston mm -hmm. or Halfway Tree. I'm not saying that you have to be close to the ATM, but you have to be within a reasonable distance. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. by doing that, I think it mitigates the misuse of um of the app by you know just randomly updating ATMs all around you mm -hmm. and so forth. Um, yes, yeah, so that that's what I've done so far. There are analytics in the app that I that I have that's currently like uh, seeing how persons are using the apps, so it's not it's not tied to a user um, identity. So I don't know that you know you Margaret Boyne is using the app. I just know that someone is using the app, mm -hmm. and I can um, see what actions they are doing in the app, and I mm -hmm. can uh, you know track that to see if any uh, malicious activities come up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sounds interesting. So how many persons have uploaded the app so far? Right, so I've have I've I've had a I think when I checked last night it was one thousand two hundred plus. Mm -hmm. It was somewhere mm -hmm. around there. Um, downloads. Yeah. And then I have around fifty daily active users, which mm -hmm. means that on an average, since I've launched the app, fifty persons have been using the app each day. Mm, that is so. awesome, man. So, what has been the feedback you have been getting? Yeah, so it's been pretty uh, pretty great, to be honest. Um, feedback from Twitter, from Instagram, from, mm -hmm. you know, persons who I don't know from my friends. Uh, it's been pretty great. I think 
And what I'll say is there is they've been very supportive. So I think what's up, I think certain things kind of surprised me. Uh, you remember when I had mentioned the having the option to, to list if an ATM is deposit taken mm -hmm, and so forth. Mm -hmm. You know, like it was actually some person's idea on Twitter that says, hey, why don't you just allow us to do that? Because I was probably thinking that nobody probably wants to do that. You know, it's mm -hmm. probably going to be too much work. Mm -hmm. And they were like, yeah, we'll be done for that. It's no problem. So, you know, just the support that has been um, pretty good. Mm. Is this the first app you have, you have created? Oh, no. <laughs> I'm not new to this. <laughs> but this is probably the biggest one. Okay. Yeah. All so right. um, last year, January, I launched, I, I released an app that um, you could like add, you know, Starbucks, your favorite Starbucks drinks, Starbucks secret menus, and persons could go in the app and see which one persons um, users were having the most and could try it. So oh. where I got the idea from was when I was on UE, I used to have a lot of friends that used to just love Starbucks mm -hmm. and they used to just be posting Starbucks every time they got Starbucks <laughs> on their Instagram and so forth. So I said, all right, let me just do something um, around this then. And mm -hmm. I did that and it was it was pretty cool. Um, I think that was the first like full app I created and i also my nine to five is also i also work on a mobile app for for my job as well okay. so, yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's a field that i'm pretty uh, passionate about and it's something that i love doing mm -hmm. when did this interest in coding start oh, okay so this started when i was in uh, so i went to the character college in second form um a family friend of mine he introduced me to a guy who was doing coding at NCU, um, a young man by the name of Joel Dean. And in second form, he taught me C++, that's a programming language. But at that time when he taught me C++, I didn't really understood the value of coding because mm. I had no you know, exposure. There was nobody else around me doing it. So I quickly forgot about it by the time I was in third form. And, uh, you know, I did I did um, IT at CSEC. Uh, IT was pretty easy for me at CSEC, um, mm -hmm. to be honest. Mm -hmm. I think by the time I got to sixth form, I went to a, a hackathon that was kept in Kingston by Nicholas Key and Jaden Johnson. Okay. So after going to that hackathon, that was where I realized that a lot of the same skill that he taught me what four or five years ago mm -hmm. um a lot of students from campion ardens jamaica college um all these kingston schools they were using that to build websites and apps and a bunch of stuff and i was like this is crazy mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's when i realized the value of what the you value. Was mm -hmm. me at that time and i think that's when i actually started you know to actually look back into it and start to take it serious and i started UE, and then here i am mm -hmm. you mentioned you went to the the cartridge. did you do uh, stem you did stem subjects there yes yeah, so i did um i did um it math physics mm -hmm. chemistry but i didn't do bio because i hate drawing <laughs> i don't <laughs> like to draw so when i realized that bio had a bunch of you know drawing um Leaf yeah. anatomy and stuff like that. I said <laughs> that was the only reason I had to not do bio. Yeah, and then yeah, so I didn't do bio, but I did all the other science subjects. Mm -hmm. You went to uni university of the West Indies. Yeah, yes. And you did um computer science. Well, yeah. naturally. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me about that your your experience at university of the West Indies. All right. So I'd say it was a very wholesome experience because what, uh, what I like about my university experience is that I didn't just focus on, on you know, academia. I, I did all sorts of things while I was at UA. While I was at UA, I was the vice president for the UA Computing Society. Mm -hmm. I um, I sat on the 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 the, the Irving Hall committee because I was a block rep there as well. Mm -hmm. So I was in charge. I was in leadership position. So I was in charge of you know planning different events, forums, parties. I did mm -hmm. all. The, I did everything at 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 UA. So I would say I had a very wholesome experience there. Mm -hmm. Um, a computer science experience though it was pretty good. Very good teachers, by the way. And we had, you know, very, um, I think our year group was very good because 
um we were we 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 stick together and mm -hmm. we encouraged each other as we went along and worked together mm -hmm. so uh, i would say it was pretty good um granted there were some courses that were very hard i'm not going to lie <laughs> you know it was there were some really really hard courses there mm -hmm. um but we stick together and we made it out mm -hmm. but there there there's a stereotype right. deandre that boy People who do computer science, there are some whiz kids, some geniuses. What do you think can be done to dispel that that view, right? So that other persons can try it out or come into the field. Yes. So, um, there are actually, um, you know, some quite a few um nonprofit organizations, which uh, I was a part of one, y YCDI, that's Youth Can Do IT, where we went into, you know, the inner city communities, mm -hmm. underprivileged and underserved schools to, um you know, help teach them how to code and so forth. So mm -hmm. I would say, you know, initially when the thing of computer science was just becoming a discipline years ago, many decades ago, it was, you know, heavily stereotyped like mm -hmm. that. But there are, um you know, NGOs that are out there trying to bridge the digital divide in our society. So that's a very good um, initiative as well. Mm -hmm. um Outside of that, my, my um, personal, you know, recommendation to persons are, is usually would would be like it's uh, computer science or coding you have to once you have a passion for it and mm -hmm. you are you know willing to try it because uh, I, i'll tell you i was not the smartest at my <laughs> university uh, in my university classes mm -hmm. but once you are always you know have an open mind because mm -hmm. it's a field where you have to keep an open mind because anything can happen. Like it's it's just this problem solving field. Mm -hmm. But you have to learn how to problem solve. And the only way that you can uh, get better at that mm -hmm. is by you know keeping at it. You have to keep on trying. So it won't come overnight. It won't come over a year. It's something that comes over time. Mm -hmm. So once you are you know keep at it, then you know you'll get better over time. Mm -hmm. Do do you have you have your own company? Um no not no not not okay. as it was something like that plan, I, you know, I, I've been to do so? yeah I've, I've been con I've been um considering it for about a year now probably mm -hmm. it's time I get up and do it <laughs> yes I think so man and after this up gone global you need to do that you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> any future plans for the app could you just um remind us of the name of the app. Right, so it's ATM Finder JA. ATM Finder JA. Right, you can find it on the App Store and it's coming soon to the Google Play Store by February. I do, in fact, have, you know, quite a few um, plans for it. I'll tell you some of them. Um, I I plan to work on an accessibility feature so that, that, that will uh, make the app accessible to members of the visually impaired community. Mm, so I have, a, I have a friend who I'll be working with in February. Mm -hmm. So, um, who is, a, you know, who is a visually impaired. So I'll be working with her to uh, make the app, you know, accessible to that community as well. Mm -hmm. uh, there are several features that I'm also working on because a person, you know, messaged me that uh, they will use an ATM, but they forgot to update it. So I've actually worked on a feature that we, you know, remind persons oh. to, update, to update ATM because... I don't know that you that you have to use an ATM. I can only make a, a calculated guess, you know, using math and um, location services. So uh, that's a feature that I've, that I've been working on. Um, mm -hmm. There are also, um, you know, several things where I've seen persons say it would be nice to know uh, if this if this ATM line is um is is full like you know like oh, how long yeah, line so long and, yeah and, and, and stuff <laughs> like that so it's something else that I'm thinking about mm -hmm. um to do it right now we're not quite there in terms of doing that it will probably take a few more months to uh, accumulate more data to do with that mm -hmm. um but it's something that uh that, that I have in mind as well so there are several um ideas I have you know down the road for ATM Finder mm -hmm. I think one of the um, you know, uh, uh, what could be a big aid to the big aid to the app is if you realize a lot of ATMs, they are located on service stations, you know, that's mm -hmm. gas stations, mm -hmm. they're located within supermarkets mm -hmm. and so forth. So if I could be able to, you know, like reach out to perhaps the bank as well, 
to uh well, I'm assuming that the banks would probably have a list of, you know, vendors that they have installed ATMs at. So each, um, like having each vendor, uh, you know, um, employees install the app, then they could also be part of updating mm. the app as well. And that yes. would be very, mm. very, that would be very reliable mm. because, you know, like a guest station attendant, she's right there. Right, right at the top and she would be able to hear when people are saying, um, the ATM now work or yes. like that. You <laughs> right, get me? Right. So, so like um things like those, you know, would be very good for the community mm -hmm. as well. So mm -hmm. um, it's just a matter of time. I'm I'm just having you know to put a few things in place first um before I start um you know um making those 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 other um things be possible. Mm -hmm. Sounds yeah. exciting and so exciting. Do you have any other interests? What you do for fun? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so kind of um, this coding thing. Um, I watch football right now. My, my side is playing. Um, I hope they win. Which yeah. is? So, Which yeah, is? So I watch, oh, Manchester United. Oh, my oh, Lord. Yeah. Another Manchester. So, yeah, it's a very, uh, very, very toxic <laughs> club from time to time. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I watch football, play football. Um, I love going. I love partying with my friends. I love um I, I love going out. So I, when I when I'm home, I'm doing this, but when I'm outside, I'm yeah, you know outside. yeah, you're having fun. What advice though do you have to leave for right. our young people who you know who have tech dreams? Well, right. So I would actually you know tell them that it's you just have to start because starting is where starting is the is the easiest thing but the hardest thing to keep doing consistently. But once you start, you'll have the motivation. And when the motivation burn out, it will come down to, you know, discipline and dedication. Mm -hmm. So, but you just need to start and then you'll probably start to see your way through there. So I also tell them that what I used to do was, I used to go on when I was in like high school and so forth. I used to go on you know, YouTube and like watch, um, like a day in the life of a software engineer working oh. at <laughs> working at Netflix. Okay. So I used to watch those little things to kind of to kind of see like what this field really is, you know. Yes. So even though I'm not working at Netflix or Google, but you know, that kind of inspired me as well. Mm -hmm. So I would actually, you know, tell them that, you know, start and then once you do that, um, there are a lot of free tutorials, a lot of free courses online. Mm -hmm. And if they're not free, they are relatively inexpensive, very, relatively um, inexpensive compared to um, a university degree as well, because you can actually do coding, the coding courses online for like say $30, 50 USD and so forth. Mm -hmm. So the, the field is very accessible. It's a very good equalizer because uh, it, it doesn't care about uh, where you're from, your race, uh, which country you're from. You just need internet and a computer mm -hmm. and, um, and a mind that's willing to, um, to, to solve problems and to keep at this thing. Mm -hmm. And if there's anything else, you can always reach out to me and, uh, you know, give a little advice where I can. Mm -hmm. Well, I am so proud of you, DeAndro. And I want to wish you all the success with this app, mm -hmm. you know. And I'm looking forward to see all these, these other plans that you have, the additional features. And I want to wish you all the best. And it was great talking to you. Thank, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. I'm so happy that, that you reached out to me and I was able to, uh, to come on your show and share my, you know, my experience with your, your viewers and listeners alike.